Hi there, we're going to go over Hasa diagrams for partially ordered sets. I'll show you three examples and we'll talk about what minimal and maximal elements are and how we can find them on a Hasa diagram. To understand Hasa diagrams, you've got to know what partially ordered sets are, and I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson on that topic, but I'll also brush you up on it here. A relation R on a set A is a partial order if it is reflexive, antisymmetric, and transitive. Then, the set A and this partial order R, which we could represent in an ordered pair, is called a partially ordered set, or PO set. So in this situation, A has been partially ordered by the relation, the partial order, R. Then, a Hasse diagram represents a partially ordered set, in particular, a finite partially ordered set. And we'll see exactly how that works in a minute. As your quick review for what this partial order stuff is, you probably know what it means for a relation to be reflexive. That means every element relates to itself. You also probably recall what it means for a relation to be transitive. If x relates to y and y relates to z, then x relates to z. Now, for it to be a partial order, it also has to be anti-symmetric. That means that no distinct elements can relate to each other symmetrically. So if x and y are distinct elements, x might relate to y, but if so, y can't relate to x. So they can relate to each other, but only in one direction. That's what anti-symmetric means. So if our relation has all these properties, then it is a partial order. And this is called a partial order because it's not necessary that every pair of elements relates to each other. So with a partial order on a set, some of the elements have been ordered with respect to each other, but maybe not all of them. All right, so how do we represent this sort of thing, a partially ordered set, with a diagram? Let's just start to think about how we might do this, and then we'll go through the ideas of refining our diagram to turn it into a Hasse diagram. Here's the classic example we're going to use. We've got a set of assorted positive integers here, and R is going to be the divides relation, which is a classic partial order. I'll leave it to you to verify that it is indeed a partial order. I want to focus more on Hasse diagrams. I'm assuming you're comfortable with partial orders. So since R is the divides relation, we could say that R is this. It's the set of ordered pairs, x, y, that come from the Cartesian product of A with itself, just meaning x is in A, and y is in A, such that x relates to y. So some of the ordered pairs that might be in this relation would be 2, 4, because 2 and 4 are both in A, and 2 divides 4. Other elements that might be in the relation, 7 and 35, or 12 and 24. To represent this partially ordered set, or PO set, in a diagram, let's do something really simple. We'll just make a circle for every element in the set A. So here I've got eight circles, and inside I will put the different elements of the set. Now, all we'll do is draw an arrow going from one element to another if they relate to each other in that direction. Remember, the relation is divides. So for an example, just to start us off, 2 divides 4. So in our diagram, I'll draw an arrow going from 2 to 4. Try to get a nice curve here, and I'll just put some arrows on that line to indicate the direction of the relation. 2 also relates to 12, for example, so I'll also draw an arrow like that. 2 also relates to itself, so we'll also need this sort of loop on all of these circles. I've gone ahead and drawn all those loops that we'll need, but there's still plenty more arrows we'll need to draw to finish representing the PO set. Just to be a little more careful about our language, what we've got going on right now is what's called a directed graph, and these things are called vertices or nodes. 
and the lines we're drawing are called directed edges or arcs. Let's continue drawing these directed edges. We need an edge going from 7 to 35, for example, because 7 divides 35. We also need one going from 4 to 24, and from 12 to 24, and I'll continue filling all these out. All right, I think I got everything. That is the directed graph that represents our partially ordered set. What you might notice about it, if you look closely, is that it's a complete disgusting mess and doesn't really appear all that helpful. Now, if we turn this into a Hasse diagram, it's gonna look a lot nicer. And a Hasse diagram is created by basically just applying some common sense restrictions to this picture. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, here's the first thing. We know that a Hasse diagram represents partially ordered sets. That's what we're trying to do. And partially ordered sets are reflexive. So I know that every element has to relate to itself. Otherwise, this wouldn't be a partially ordered set. So having all these loops on the vertices, it's really not necessary. I know that every element relates to itself. I don't need an arrow drawn there to remind me. So our first step to make this a Hasse diagram is get rid of all the loops on the vertices. We've done that. Now, is there any other property of partial orders that we could use to cut down on the clutter in our diagram? Well, what about transitivity? I accidentally scratched it out. I meant to highlight it. What about transitivity? Well, let's come back to our diagram. I see, for example, that I have this arrow going from 2 to 8 because 2 divides 8. But I know that by transitivity, right? Because 2 divides 4 and 4 divides 8. And since this is representing a partial order, which is transitive, I know that 2 has to divide 8. I don't really need that arrow going from 2 to 8 because I know I'm dealing with a transitive relation. So if I can follow the arrows to get from 2 to 8, then 2 divides 8. End of story. So that's the next step. I'm going to get rid of all the arrows that are basically a result of transitivity. Just to show you a couple more examples of that, I see that 3 divides 24, but of course it does because it divides 12 and 12 divides 24, so I can get rid of that edge. Another example, I see that 4 divides 24, but again, of course it does. 4 divides 8 and 8 divides 24, so that's just a result of transitivity. I don't need this arrow going from 4 to 24. Now I've erased all the arrows that just come from transitivity, and we've got a much cleaner diagram. I didn't need those transitive arrows anyway, right? I know that 2 divides 24, and now in my diagram, that's represented by the fact that I can travel along the directed edges from 2 to 24. I know 3 divides 24, because I can go from 3 to 24 by traveling along the directed edges. Traveling along those edges is really just applying transitivity. There's one more really cool thing we can do to finally make this a Hasse diagram. We want to get rid of the arrows. I know that sounds crazy, right? The arrows indicate the direction of the relation. Does 2 relate to 4 or does 4 relate to 2? Well, the arrow lets me know that. Now here's the idea. What if we redraw the diagram so that all the arrows point up? Then I don't need an arrow to indicate the direction. I know the direction of the relation is up. If there's a line between 2 and 4 and 4 is above 2, well then I know that means that 2 relates to 4. 2 divides 4. All right, I'm going to make that final step and redraw this graph like that. Finally, there it is, the Hasse diagram for the Poe set consisting of our set A under the divides relation. And you can see how now the arrows aren't necessary because the direction of the relations are indicated by moving from top to bottom. It's really quite brilliant. For example, looking in the original picture here, I see that 2 relates to 4 and nothing relates to 2. So 2 definitely needs to be at the bottom, and 4 needs to be above 2. 
I see that 4 relates to 8 and 12. So 8 and 12 both need to be above 4. 8 and 12 both relate to 24, and so I need 24 to be above both 8 and 12. We also have this disconnected component consisting of 35 and 7 on the side, since neither of these guys relate to any of these, and none of these relate to either of these. And this occurrence of having multiple components can only happen with a partially ordered set. It wouldn't happen with a total order, because in a total order, every pair of elements are related in some way. Now, in the Hasse diagram, we can see how 2 relates to 24, for example, because I can go from 2 to 24 by traveling up the diagram. And up is the direction of our relation here. I know that 3 relates to 24, because I can travel from 3 to 24 by moving up the diagram. On the other hand, 3 doesn't relate to 8, because although I could travel to 8 if I just walked around arbitrarily, I wouldn't be moving up the diagram the whole time, and transitivity holds by moving up the diagram. Now let's quickly touch on some terminology. I want to tell you about maximal and minimal elements. An element Y in a pose set A with partial order R is maximal in the set if whenever Y relates to A, A is equal to Y. This means an element is maximal if it relates to no element except itself. Other elements might relate to it, but it can only relate to itself. Similarly, an element x in A is minimal if whenever A relates to x, A equals x. This means for an element to be minimal, no element can relate to it except itself. It can relate to other elements, but no element can relate to it except itself. Going up to our Hasse diagram, can you see how we would use it to identify maximal and minimal elements? A maximal element would be 24, because 24 relates to no element except itself. Remember, in a Hasse diagram, every element does still relate to itself, even though there's no line to indicate that. Another maximal element would be 35. Again, 35 relates to no element except itself, and so it's maximal. In both cases, we see that things relate to them, but they don't relate to anything except themselves. Now, what about the minimal elements? Can you spot those? Hopefully, you guessed that 2 is a minimal element. Because nothing relates to 2, you can't go up to 2, except for the fact that 2 relates to itself. Similarly, 7 is a minimal element, because no element relates to 7 except itself. So, long story short, the maximal elements of a partially ordered set appear at the top of the components of a Hasse diagram, and the minimal elements appear at the bottom. And in fact, 3 is a minimal element here as well. Because again, no element relates to 3 except itself. So I hope you can see that. Maximal elements appear at the tops of components, and minimal elements appear at the bottoms. Now, one quick thing before our final example. Why don't we talk about Hasse diagrams for total orders? Well, here's why. This is a Hasse diagram for a total order on the set of positive integers 1 through 4. So you can see how I've represented this ordered set. We've got the set, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then the order being imposed on it, less than or equal to. If we drew a Hasse diagram for this, it would look like this, where the relation goes from left to right. And total orders are always going to look like this if you make a Hasse diagram for them. It's just going to be a long chain. So not that interesting. So when it comes to Hasse diagrams, we're really talking about partially ordered sets. And here's one more example of a Hasse diagram for a partially ordered set for the road. Here, our set S is the power set 
of the set containing 1, 2, and 3, and our relation is simply the subset relation, and this is the resulting Hasse diagram. You can see here the minimal element is the empty set, because no set is a subset of the empty set except for itself. We see the maximal element is the whole set itself, that original set containing 1, 2, and 3, because it does not relate to any set except itself. I can also see how the set containing 1, for example, is a subset of the set containing 1, 2, and 3, because I can move up the diagram to go between the two things. You might also notice that this Hasse diagram kind of looks like a cube. That's pretty cute, isn't it? Anyways, we'll wrap it up there. So, again, a Hasse diagram is a way to represent a finite, partially ordered set. Drawing Hasse diagrams by hand obviously takes a little bit of work, but the basic idea of how it's done is to give every element of the set its own vertex, and then draw directed edges from an element to all of the elements it relates to, and do that for every vertex. Then, simply erase the lines that result from transitivity. All the while, I'm assuming we're not going to draw the loops because we're past that. Once you've erased the directed edges that are a result of transitivity, all you have to do is redraw the graph so that the relation is indicated by the position of the elements. So if 2 relates to 3, for example, 3 needs to be above 2 in your diagram. Once you've drawn everything like that so that the directions of relations are indicated strictly by positions, you can remove the arrows and you've completed the Hasse diagram. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Hope this helped. Down, sir.